Hello and welcome. In this video, we will learn about EIP 712. We are going to see what is EIP 712, why we need this. Finally, we will see this in practice by taking a simple example. So let us start with what is actually EIP 712. So it's basically a standard for hashing and signing. But for typed structured data, as opposed to just by strings. So why was the need of creating EIP 712 when we when, when we can do, you know, signing with a normal way? So the problem is when you try to sign something, you have to sign the random bytes of strings, right? So that doesn't give you information what actually you are signing. So for that, the this. AIP 712 was proposed so that we have some kind of a some kind of a simple view about the message contents that we are trying to sign right so if we look the main aim of AIP 712 is basically to simplify off-chain signing of messages for efficient on-chain verification so we are going to see how we could sign message so that we can see the contents of message that we are signing right so the best thing is to see what is you know happening when we do signing without eip 712 and what will change when we do signing with eip 712 all right so basically if we do signing without eip 712 that normal signature process so what we basically are seeing is that we are trying to sign a cryptic hex string that is like visible to user and it provides you no context about the message contents so that was the real problem with normal signing so if we look at how it looks when you sign message when you try to sign messages through metamask if you look at here you you basically are just signing a random hex bytes so that doesn't give anything about what you really what you, you what you are really signing right so so to remove this AIP 71 allows you to define the types, define the structure, then allows you to view those kind of, you know, contents inside, you know, MetaMask or some wallet when you, when you are basically trying to sign the, the message. So you will be seeing all the contents in the message and it depends upon what kind of like data or data structure we have proposed, right, for signing. So now how AIP 71 solves this, it allows an efficient encoding mechanism, right? Along with its structure. And finally, the result is that users are able to verify what message contents they are trying to sign, right? So this is how it changed now. After using AIP 712, you see, there is a proper message contents that you are trying to see. Isn't this nice? It's fantastic. So let us see, uh, you know, these things in practice. Uh, I'm going to take a simple example for this. We will write a simple contract where we try to set string value, right? Where we try to set string value in a smart contract, but we will use EIP 712 in order to sign. But I have used normal way of signing also so that we, we can differentiate in between those two approaches, right? So let us start with the practical okay let us see this in 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 practice now right so we have a we have a dap that is connected to the metamask and we have two types of signatures here one is normal signature signing process another is aip 712 signing process so first we will try to do signing with normal way that's like traditional way of signing via metamask then we will do signing with aip 712 so the basic aim here, here, the basic aim here is to set a string inside a smart contract. So we want to just store a value inside that, right? So we will try to store here as an example, like we want to store as one, and this will be through normal signature process, right? So here, MetaMask is just loading here. We'll be able to see see what we are signing here so this is the normal way without eip 712 so we are basically signing here the hex data bytes so that's the problem because you are not able to infer or you are not able to view what is inside the message contents in a in in 
most like simplified way so that you you are able to understand to which dab you are connected what you are signing right so this is about the normal way of signing so we hit confirm here and you will see this will be updated as one here we go we have stored value as one right now we'll try to do it the same process with the help of AIP712 we'll try to just store the value two through AIP711 through AIP712 right so metamask again loading see the beauty of AIP712 you will be able to see all kind of you know message contents like that way that we will see when we just discuss the code behind this example right so we have sender we have contract address we have the value that we want to store and we have other sort of things that we want to that we have passed to it so that is what brings you know what makes AIP712 a most like attractive and most dApps are uh, using trying to use it now so this will help us there are two things now first we are able to just sign it you know off chain and we are successfully able to retrieve back our the sender address now after this this will be passed to smart contract the signature for for on chain verification as well once that that is true on chain verification is successful then it will allow us to store that value to inside the smart contract variable hit the confirm button wait for its confirmation if everything goes right we will be able to see the store value as two so for that i am hitting refresh button see what is there we expect that there should be the value two here right this is a bit slow here we go we have two value here right now we will look at the code that is behind this so that will give us much more understanding about this concept okay so let us have a view so for aip 712 basic there is two there is a basic requirement that you have to define the type first right so how we define the type that we need to see right so i'm defining the type as like there are two things you have to define the domain separator and you have to define the real message type right that you want to like the basic uh, message contents that you want to pass so AIP like domain separator is for 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 particular reason like you want to interact with multiple dApps with multiple versions right suppose you want to interact with some kind of some kind of like USDT through one 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 app and through other app as well so how you could make difference because the the USDT contract is deployed to Ethereum itself so this will allow you to differentiate because this allows you to define which which app you are connected and which version you are you are you are using currently so this is like you know the, the main reason for using this and there is the pro like the primary message then what you want to just set here we have a we have a requirement that we want to set you know a message content simple string we want to send inside a smart contract so but we want to see from which address we are doing and to which contract we are interacting with to what message like what variable we want to set right so the the, the value inside that variable we want to set and the deadline we are passing so this is like you know temporary example or you can say uh, you can you could you could come up with any other thing it basically depends upon the use case that you want to set right so we have here so we are basically defined these kind of the set test chain id to which you are connected depends upon the blockchain right it could be one as the ethereum mainnet it could be multiple things like three for hopston four for inkeby and for other you know blockchains then we are defining the message itself so we want to send it from our own account that we are connected to and we want to pass on the variable that from like from from input field right so and the deadline we want to pass so this this information will be visible for us in metamask before signing right so then we, we once we did the sign we verify whether the you know it is able to recover the proper signer address again if it is we pass the signature into the smart contract and then inside the smart contract if verification is true right if verification is true then that will be able to set the value of of that message you can say it could be anything like for this example we are taking a very very naive example 
just to get things about EIP 712 right so this is like about EIP 712 now there is a difference between its versions here we are talking about version 3 because this allows us simple message types like the types we have here but for uh, you know version 4 it allows much more advanced like it allows you to define the group mail and some sort of advanced stuff like arrays as a valid arrays in in case of from and in case of two so that is not much like difference but it's always preferable to go with erp 712 with version 4 but version 3 is also applicable and we can use it all right i hope you you like this video if you like do hit a like button on youtube do share the channel for much more interesting videos